Hello, I'm Courtney. What's up? And welcome to Book Talk. And today I'm going to be discussing the third and final book in the Embassy Row series, Take the Key and Lock Her Up by Allie Carter. And like I just said, this is the third and final book in her latest series, the Embassy Row series. And I finished this book last night. It took me like two days to read. This was such a quick and fun read for me and I just loved being back in this world because I love this series so much and I really can't say much for this book since it is the final one, but I had such a fun time reading this. Everything was just wrapped up so beautifully and I just loved the end. I thought it was great and if you haven't picked up this series yet, you totally should because these are some awesome books. So if you have not read this book yet and you do not want to be spoiled, I would leave right now. So bye now, spoiler people! Okay, so take the key and lock her up. Wow, so much stuff happened in this book. I don't even know where to like exactly begin because just so much happened in it. Like there was the whole princess situation that we found out at the end of See How They Run and that's resolved and at first it was very hard for me to like put the pieces together. I was very confused about everything but what I've gotten from it is is that the king and the queen and the two kids you know they all died but there was the child Amelia. She lived, grew up with society and they wanted Amelia back on the throne because it was her rightful throne. Grace, she's a descendant of Amelia and so Anne's plan is to put Grace back on the throne by marrying her son but Anne does not want Grace to find proof and find these bodies like Grace's mother once had and that's how Grace's mom got killed because she found the bodies in the palace and then Grace does and Grace almost dies like again like Grace be getting herself almost killed like every five pages and I'm just like dude okay you got to chill like this is too much like let's see she almost died at that hospital she almost died in Paris she almost died in that fire attack crazy whatever you know the end that was insane by the way uh yeah she was just dying almost all the time and I was like <laughs> why why is this happening this needs we need to stop calm calm down okay let's all just talk this out but nope everyone be secretive and I hated it I hated it everyone knew like everything except Grace and I was like oh gosh this is so bad but um you know and I thought she was on our side and when she made the deal about Grace marrying Thomas and having these kids I was like you know that doesn't sound terrible like yes that would technically be Amelia getting back on the throne since she's a descendant but like something still feels off because you betrayed us in Paris and then you know she betrayed us in the end by burning that room and almost killing Grace and then Thomas which by the way before I talk about the end I loved Thomas I thought he was so great and even though I was like I'm hardcore team Alexa you know if they had gotten married like I would have totally been fine with it but like I said I'm hardcore team Alexa but I felt so bad because he shot his mom and then everyone was saying in the news that Princess Anne was ill and then oh my gosh the very last chapter with Anne when they're in the hospital and they're all calling her Karina which is Alexa's mom and Anne's just like no I'm the princess I'm the princess of Adria I'm princess Anne like what are you doing and then they inject the stuff in her and she kind of just dazes off and <gasps> Grace, the very last words that Grace says to her is, it's okay, Anne. It wasn't your fault. After all, it was just an accident. And I was like, oh, snap. Grace, you savage. Because that's exactly what Anne said on the bridge, I think. And I was like, ha Savage. Grace is like the ultimate savage. And I love her. She had so much character development in this book. And yes, there were points where I thought she was going to go off the rails and be crazy again. And I was like, no, Grace, you've come so far. Don't do this to yourself. But I'm just like so proud of her. She's come so far. And just, I loved it when she's sitting on the wall in the end with all her friends. And they're talking about how she's going to start a, 
at school and everything and she finally gets to have this normal life it was just, it was beautiful i loved it and then a like size arm was around her and i was like yes they're together because you know i accepted the fate of thomas and grace but i was like but really i i don't want that because alexi oh i love him so much i have missed him so much like when he showed up right in the beginning of this book i was like it's the bay. I I missed you. Oh, come here. And then 80 pages later, Grace and Alexa got together. They kissed on the bridge and it was the best thing ever when Grace just pulled him and kissed him and they jumped off the bridge. It was the best thing ever. I love that moment when she jumps off the bridge and they get on that boat and the whole squad there. It was beautiful. I missed this squad. So much and I just I feel like my favorite moments were with all of them Grace, Alexi, Noah, Megan, Rosie. I just I loved those times. Those were just like the best of times because yes I know they all have problems and there's a lot of bad stuff going on but you know at least they were all together and it was all it was just it was very it was very nice and it just reminded me so much of the Gallagher Girl series and their squad. Like they're so similar and also another thing that I realized is that Anne and Catherine from the Gallagher Girl series, Zach's mom, are so similar. Like, they're both just insane and just want things to stay secret and kill people and blow things up. I was like, wow, would you look at that? I didn't even make that connection until this book. And also how Alexis and his mother, Karine, Karina, we meet her in this, we save her, and she's all wacko, but she actually helps us out in the end because that stupid song. And also her and Alexi's and Karina's relationship was also very similar to Zach's and Catherine's. I don't know which one is worse, so I feel like it might be Zach and Catherine because <laughs> if you've read the Calhoun Girl series, her relationship is, it's just boom, it's all over the place. But I, I felt really bad for Alexi though because I felt like every time he and Grace visited her, like she just focused on Grace and I was like, oh my poor child. But I don't think Alexi even loves her in the first place though. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of wish we got to see them have a conversation. I don't know. I would just like to see that. I feel like that would be very interesting to know. But going back to Alexa and Grace, oh my gosh, all their moments were just beautiful. They were just so amazing and just, oh, they were so great. And I love it when Grace is chasing Alexa after the ball. She's wearing that beautiful blue gown on the cover. Like, look at, the, okay, first off, look at this gown. It's beautiful. And let me just say, when I first saw this cover, I immediately thought that that was Alexa right there. But, nope, it's Thomas, which, fine. But, I love it when she's chasing him and they stop on the sidewalk and they're kind of like snapping at each other. And then, Grace goes, I have to marry him. And then Alexa is like, you're not married yet. And pulls her in for a kiss. And they're just like making out on the street. It was great. 10 out of 10 stars. But overall, this book ended well. Like by the end of this book, I was like, okay, I think I got everything. Like I follow Allie Carter's books pretty well. But there are some points where I'm just like, okay, I don't even know what's going on right now. But by the end, I was like, okay. I, I understand this. This all makes sense now. Which, by the way, Allie Carter had me, like, gasping every five seconds. That's what she does in her books. Like, she just surprises me all the time. And I never see things coming. I never put things together because Allie's just so good at writing plot twists. Like, I don't know how she does it. She is just amazing. But this was overall, this was a great finale book. And, oh my gosh, do I think this is better than United We Spy? No, United We Spy is just golden. But this was really good too. For my first book of 2017, this was really good. And I think that's all I have to say for this book talk. Overall, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought everything was wrapped up very, very nice. And I think that that's all I have to say. So I hope you enjoyed this book talk. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up. You know, that thumbs up right down below. But um, yeah, I'm Courtney and I'll see you all next time with a new video soon. So I will see you then. So. Bye! Yo!